Welcome to the series where we're going to be creating a weather forecaster in Django. So this is our final product over here. As we can see, we got the current day's temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. Below that, we got the, reg the user's region, which is basically their state or their province, depending on where you stay in the world. All the weather data that you see on the app is automatically retrieved from the user's location, which we retrieve from, the, from their IP address. So meaning that they don't have to enter any location, they don't have to enter their location. We automatically get their location and get weather data for their location. So they have to do less work. So below that, we got the hourly weather data for the current day. And it's got a nice scroll effect over here. And for each hour, it displays the icon describing the weather. And then below that, we got the temperature. If we click down at week here, we see the next day and then six days after that. Displays the name of the day and as well as the icon describing the day in terms of its, in terms of its weather. And then we got the minimum and then the maximum temperature over here. So that's what we're going to be creating in this series. If you're interested, then come along and join me in creating this. So create a folder in which you want to store the project that we are about to start. And then once you created that folder, open it with your text editor, open your terminal. Now let's create our project. So we're going to type in Django hyphen admin start project and we're going to call this project just weather. Let's go into this weather folder and once we're in the folder we're going to say python manage.py start app and then we're just going to call this app app. Great. So once that's done, close your terminal. And now in the weather folder that you just created, right click new folder and type in templates. In this templates folder, add a new file and call it home.html. In this app folder over here, create a new folder, call it static. Then once you've done that, head over to settings.py and over here we're going to add our template folder as a template directory. So we're going to say template underscore dir equals os.path dot join and then we're going to pass in base underscore dir and then the name of your folder that you're going to store all your templates in so in our case it's just templates cool once you've done that scroll down and installed apps just add the app you just created and then under drs add the directory that you just created, template underscore dir. Okay, great. Once you've done that, open your app folder, and now what we're gonna do is create our first view. So we're gonna call this view home, make it pass in a request, And then it's going to return render requests, comma, and then the name of the template that you want to render. In our case, it's home.html. Okay. So once you've done that, let's set up a path 
for this HT for this view. We're gonna call it. We're gonna say path, and then that comma views, and then pass in the name of the view, which in our case is home, and then we're gonna call this path home as well. We're gonna say import. Views. Sorry, we're going to say from app import views. Great. Let's head over to our home.html and let's add some HTML to it. So, on the templates, home.html. So for this project, we're not actually going to be coding much HTML, CSS, or JavaScript. We're actually going to download a custom template that's already made and looks very nice. And we're just going to link it to the respective uh, CSS and JavaScript files. The reason that we're not doing any CSS and JavaScript is basically just to save time. And I want to show you guys more the back end and how to actually get weather forecast data and display it on a web page rather than spending time with front end stuff. Great. So with that said, head over to your browser, type in weather 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 templates HTML and we're going to be getting it from W3 layouts. I think it's this one over here. I'll make sure I link the site in the description box below. This is the one we're going to be using for our project. Let's head over to the demo to see what we can expect. Okay, cool. So as you can see here, we got values for today's weather and you can scroll across it nicely by holding down on your mouse. And then when you click week, you can see the next seven days, the min, the min temperature, the max. Nice images here. Got the current time. So obviously all this data here is fake and it's more, it's more they showing out the layout and, layout and how it would, it would look with real data. But all these values are fake and obviously not accurate. So what we're going to be doing in this project is getting real data and displaying this data on a nice looking template like this. So with that said, let's download this template so we can start linking it to our project. Download templates. Agree. So you need to click one of these to download it. You must put, put your phone email in here, but if you don't want to, you can just close it and it'll still show up with download. Okay, great. Once that's done, make sure Make sure you extract the file. Great. So now, what we're going to do here is open up the folder that we just downloaded. It's called web over here, select folder, cool. So now let's open up the index page, which is basically all the HTML for the page. Select all, and we will copy this and paste it in our own HTML page. If something went wrong. So control A, copy, and then just paste it there. Oh, I know why, because when I renamed it, 
I mean, when I name the file, I forgot to spell HTML right. So there we go, got all its colors. And now select all of these folders and move it into our static folder there. Close that, open this up. Now let's link this HTML page to the respective CSS and JavaScript files. Now, as you can see, it's already linked here, but in Django, we have to use template tagging to link it so Django can read it. So this is gonna stay the same, except for the href, we're gonna add curly braces, percent sign, static, the name of the folder that you wanna reference now. In our case, it's static, because all our static uh, files are in there. And then add in this link here. So, so great, simple as that. That's how you link a static file, well, a CSS file in Django. Now for the JS, JS files. Add in static here, and then pass in this link here. Oops. Great, so once that's done, what we're gonna do, we're gonna say curly braces again, percent signs, and we're gonna say load static. Just telling Django to load static. Cool. So Django won't read these files unless you type this before you link them. Great. So as you can see, all the values here for the hourly temperatures as well as the daily temperatures are all hard-coded. But essentially what we want to do when we get further into this project is actually loop through forecast, uh, forecast weather values and then display them in blocks of code like this instead of hard-coding each value. So if you don't understand what I just said, no worries. Just take my word for it and just delete. Just leave one, one of these code snippets at the top. And then delete the rest like this. Make sure when you're deleting it that you're deleting just this div called item, so you don't get any errors further down the line. Oops. Great, so once you've done that, then do the exact same for the daily temperatures. Just make sure you delete each div that's called W3 grids row. Oops. Okay, last one. Great. So now let's link our images. So just like before, static and then say images and then the file is called one.png now we're going to want to add the same thing to the other picture down here oops but this one's called 2.png. 
Great, so let's run this and see what we get. Say python manage.py run server. Great. Copy this over here, put it in your browser. Great, so as you can see, just what we expected, just like the demo that we looked at earlier, and we can see just one value here, one value there, just like we expected. That's all for this tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe, and we'll see you in the next tutorial where we will be retrieving weather data from an API.